Hello and welcome to session 8 of Outlander's Guide to Teledaria. On a Monday? Yes, on a Monday. Uh, things are going to change in terms of schedule from here on out. Uh, and it could just happen whenever. So uh, yeah, let's, let's go ahead and uh, um, go meet our players. Hello! 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 Hello. Welcome back, Matt! Welcome! Welcome back! Welcome, Welcome back! How are you feeling? Oh, there we go. My thing is messing up. I'm, uh, I'm doing better. <laughs> uh, not great, but better. He's amazing! He... Yes! <laughs> absolutely flawless. I'm back to 110% as, as was demanded of me. Uh, <laughs> Please let contract. my kids go. Buddy, <laughs> I'm sorry that you went through all that. Hmm. I hope here you get back to 100% in uh, uh, in no time. Yeah. So sorry in advance if uh, Pontifex sounds a little bit off. We'll just say that he hasn't had water in two weeks. <laughs> but it's <laughs> wow, Talix, that was supposed to be your job. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay. You're supposed to water your plants. <laughs> I forgot he only drank. <laughs> Just uh, to water IPH. the plants. He never thought IPH to, IPH to water the frog. Water. <laughs> it's very demanding. Okay. I only drink alkaline smart water. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so basic. Uh, so, um, because... <laughs> well done. Oh, God. I didn't even think about it until I heard the, the pained giggles. Oh, okay, so because we are playing uh, a session immediately after, like literally 24 hours after the previous one. And Bonus session! Yes! Yay! <laughs> uh, yeah, we're, um, we're gonna be doing a different kind of, uh, of summary this time because nobody would have had like the time to prepare uh, anything fancier. Uh, and not only that, but we're also gonna be doing it together, and it's gonna be for the last two sessions, so we can bring Matt up to speed. <laughs> also known as a normal summary. Okay. Uh, do you... How, how about this? I, I'll just start it, and then you guys can interject with anything I might be missing. Uh, or you can take over from me, or you can... Uh, do whatever you want. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> I mean, it's clear, yeah? Yeah. So... So, you know, in Minecraft, <laughs> they not only have maps, but they also just have books. That you can write. <laughs> Maybe the written book is more like a written book. <laughs> okay. So session six, uh, we ended session five with uh, Pontifex giving his speech uh, on on the stage in Cleon, uh, and while he was giving the speech, uh, the speech, uh, Tekka was uh, looking for information on dreams, and he actually ended up getting something. Uh, he heard from a gnome uh, something about a tree where uh, if you sleep beneath that tree, you're going to get very interesting and very beautiful dreams, and. Um, Tekka is interested in checking that out, but it's going to be, uh, it's very far away from your current location in the world, so that might uh, uh, happen in the future. Oh goodness. My computer is struggling, it's fine, we'll make it. Um, everybody met up in a tavern, and uh, yeah, there, were a, there were a lot of talks. Kalix sneaked out during the night, but um, eventually returned unharmed. The main thing that we skipped over, and that we will uh, cover today, is that the following morning Pontifex had a... Um... Oh, thank you, Matt. <laughs> uh, P Pontifex uh, had a talk with the tabaxi named The Stars in Arise, and we're gonna like flashback that uh, uh, into today's session, so we get to explore exactly what happened during that talk. Uh, meanwhile, the rest of the party went to meet the local priest, uh, who... Having lost his faith and with it his powers, uh, his powers, he wanted the group to um, go retrieve a certain artifact for him that would give him, uh, uh, would pretty much replace his powers and allow him to heal people again. But you guys refused because 
Letting you talk. Oh, he asks us to rob uh, a Ladarian grave. Indeed, uh, the artifact was buried yeah. with its previous uh, owner. <clears throat> and uh, that was Plus, something else. Plus, he was just to... like kind of a uh, kind of a lost soul. Uh, he was. Uh, it's a little bit. Uh, how should I put it? <laughs> <laughs> I missed so much. He he had lost his way. That's when in Talix's opinion. That's when Pip came up with uh, uh, a very unique way of approaching the problem. Uh, if Austin, you'd like to describe what he did? Yeah. Um, in order to get sort of an insight into Egon's mindset and try and see if there was something deeper that he was hiding or possibly didn't even know about, uh, Pip fashioned his white doll into an effigy of Egon um, and asked Egon for uh, some tokens of his, some like things like hair or uh, a clip of nail or a sock. Um, and he used all of these things to dress up the doll until it looked like Egon and pricked it with a bunch of needles and uh, basically got to see like what Egon's greatest fear was. Um, and then Pip used that information in the only way he knew how and just um yeah tried to tried to talk to egon about that situation <laughs> which ended up scarring him for life I <laughs> <laughs> well eventually with uh pip's unique kind of intervention <clears throat> the uh the group managed to convince egon to um come clean to his community and to the jade council itself about his uh, uh loss of faith and powers and uh, uh return home and that uh Believing that that was likely the best thing for him and for his health. Um, that and marked. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. That marked the end of session six. Uh, session seven started with the group deciding what to do afterwards. Uh, Alex needed a nap. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we wasted a lot of time. <laughs> Ultimately, like the, you finished yeah. uh, just doing a few things and you were kind of getting ready to go. Uh, there was a cute bonding moment where Pekka and Talix and Pip um, attempted to, to find some plants in the river and to go fishing. And Sid, how did that go? Oh boy. Um, yeah, so Pip started talking to the fish and they were really scared and freaked out about being in a bucket. Um, and uh, we kind of just got a huge guilt trip about everything um yeah. but we still <laughs> killed the fish and had them for dinner so you know there was an especially thanks to austin an especially uh uh intense description about like them <laughs> screaming until they got pulled out of the water and then like strangling <laughs> in the air and then yeah i don't know austin austin had some pretty nice descriptors for everything we learned that fish is, fishing mm -hmm. is absolutely ruined by having somebody who can understand a fish. Yeah. It's <laughs> pretty metal. Yeah. Uh, so with the fishing trip ruined, uh, <laughs> eventually the, <laughs> the group had dinner. This is why we can't have nice things, Pip. <laughs> How are you supposed to go on a father-son fishing trip when you don't have a father and you can hear the fish? <laughs> <laughs> that does make it difficult, yeah. Now we're eating cow food. <laughs> Pip is even from a colony that's like on the on the shore with the sea. <laughs> it's... it's so loud. It's so loud. <laughs> it's screaming. It's screaming all the time. <laughs> you, you don't know. Just they're screaming because they all believe they're drowning. That's the real reason I had to leave. <laughs> you go mad with that kind of... <laughs> kind of ambient noise <laughs> yeah <laughs> but hey um Tekka uh, Tekka cooked the the fish very well in the kitchen of the <clears throat> of the tavern uh and uh, Buvan was invited to have dinner with the rest of the group oh that was uh they had a they had a, a fun evening and then they realized they still had to pay for the rooms for the night and they were like you know what we're just leaving we're just camping outside and <laughs> leaving a little earlier um so the group slept out in the rain, 
And then they set off on their journey. They have decided mm. instead of following the road, uh, here let me let me bring up the map so it's, uh, it's uh, here we go. So instead of uh, following the road, they have decided to um, take the shortcut uh, through the swamp. Uh, With our destination being Weira, right? Yeah. Indeed. Okay. Yes. Um, so yeah, there's the. Uh, the grave that the priest told us about up here. Um, we know, yeah, somewhere around here is the tree that we ultimately want to get to. But yeah, hopefully we can find some sort of work in Vera. Mm. And also we want to this. pass through Arya on the way. Oh yeah, the rumor about the machines. There's a, a few things going on here. There's uh, <laughs> all the towns have have names. There's something about Pip's grandma. There's a yeah, glove. We got a lot of, we got a lot of uh, character backstory and a glove, a dreamer's tree. The, suddenly, the the plot of Near is over here in a circle. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love Near. Can we just skip everything and go to that? <laughs> yeah, sure. Yes. I mean, the world of Near is. Awful, but yeah. I mean, let's uh, go grab like Pip's grandma first because she might be important, and then and then go and get the, the robots. <laughs> okay, so um, after the as as Jamuel uh, keeps chronicling uh, the the party's journey through the, through uh, Ladaria, um, what basically counted as the summary of session six included a mention of a of a mechanical bird that Jamuel spotted, but nobody else in the party had. Uh, so at the beginning of the session, they immediately questioned uh, the the book about it, uh, and they learned that uh, Jamil had spotted some kind of machine bird in the town. Um, what? Oh, sure, sure, sure. Uh, Pip, in, in, in fact, spent a bit of the day looking for it, but uh, failed to to locate it. Uh, but the the knowledge of such a machine in, in the town did. Uh, um, remind uh, Brooke, and he also got this as a, I guess, as an official quest from the local tavern keep um, about the presence of a different kind of machine uh, in this area between Erka and Simleon that seemingly uh, prowls the, the jungle and attacks people indiscriminately. So that's something to keep in mind. Okay. As for the journey towards Vera, um... The main things that happened uh, was, first of all, we have learned not to take advice from cows as far as food is concerned. Uh, is that right, Austin? Mm-hmm. They, 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 they had us eating grass. Cow food is good against mosquitoes. <laughs> <laughs> we discovered something. Yes, uh, the, the very water ferns that uh, uh, Pontifex had uh, discussed at length uh, just a couple of days earlier uh, yeah, turned, out to be, to turned out to be not very delicious or at least nobody in the group figured out how to, how to uh, make them good uh, but if you burn them they do keep the mosquitoes at bay so your nights have been uh, mosquito free on your journey that's all wonderful but did we ask the real question of how do they reproduce that's yet to be answered that's important, guys. That's the money. <laughs> uh, oh, the plants, I, I, yes. I know a dwarf with, that's real curious about it that has a heavy purse. Uh, well, I I took a sample to sketch and we still have some more to burn so we can like dissect these and get to the bottom of this. I just had a very weird thought of Talix sketching these ferns reproducing. <laughs> <laughs> take, take from Excuse that what you me. will and just hand that over to the dwarf <laughs> the <laughs> mystery solved <laughs> um. <laughs> on the it second day of travel of... Oh. Uh, on the second day of travel uh, the party heard uh, uh, bird singing and they were intrigued by its particular uh, kind of melody that sounded like a proper song uh, rather than just the, the chirping of any bird. Uh, so Pip and Talix went ahead to investigate and uh, uh, Jason, what did they find? A uh, glimmer. A big, like a gigantic magpie the size of a horse who 
was intelligence, despite speaking in bird language, and uh, had a big backpack full of shiny things that she traded. It was yeah, very yeah. cute. Yep, she accepted a variety of objects of uh, dubious value from you guys. She bought three out of the five items that she was selling. And mm -hmm. because I wasn't sure if Pontifex would be interested in any of them, we're going, we're going to also um, give you a chance to go over what she has left and whether you'd like uh, either item. Yeah, so we bought a cursed snow globe. I that is going to take Pip's soul. It's, uh, we, I said nothing of the sort. It's just a snow globe. We bought. We bought. Uh, we bought a little vial of liquid with uh, gold confetti in it. Yeah, golden liquid. Nice. Half an alizé. Okay. And uh, I got a little miniature castle carving that is made of crystal and reflects the sun. All for the price of a mirror, a dart, and what else did we trade? A hunting trap. Yes. Oh, yeah, a hunting a trap. A 25 pound hunting trap. Mm hmm. Well, I've got a broken dragon chest set that keeps making me lose. <laughs> 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 she also wanted Brooke's shield, but Brooke didn't give her that. And I'm sure that, like, while while Pontifex there, she was ogling all over your your fancy shiny clothes. Probably. <laughs> oh yeah, that was one of the things she was selling too. If you want to. Well, while we were in town, he wasn't uh, he wasn't wearing his armor because he he took that off on one of the days that we camped, and then he just never put it back on. Um, oh. So he's probably like you know left that into in the room or or is actually no if we if we don't actually have a room then he's probably just carrying it around for whatever reason but okay i didn't know those old bones could support your body weight <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's not like <laughs> subsisting on the armor's framework that's the that's the impression <laughs> you gave like me <laughs> that's what you that's what you <laughs> Okay. That's what you put in my head, is all I'm saying. Uh, while we finish the summary, I'm just going to save this map and then restart the Tabletop Simulator, because my computer is uh, uh, struggling right now. Oh no. Um, you ruined my character reveal that he was a Warforged all along. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, the plot twist. With okay. a frog exoskin. <laughs> He's literally just an animatronic person. Beneath all those robes with the skin you've never seen, it's just robots. <laughs> that explains Several why we've never seen them breathe. Robots don't need to breathe. You're spoiling the, the twist for the Ezen. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, now, now that the near plot lines in here, everything's a robot. Including the Ezen, <laughs> especially the Ezen. I said they wear masks. Did you say they wear blindfolds and revealing clothing? Hmm. Well, you found That's me out. You know. This entire campaign is just a near, a near reference. Nothing more, nothing le less. I mean, that's that's some character for you. It, it sure <clears> is. It's pretty good, actually. Thank you. But yeah, the the session ended uh, while the party was camping for the night, still on the same day after meeting uh, uh, Glimmer, and uh, we were on the. On the edge between the second and the third shift between uh, Pekka and uh, Brooke. And as the two were talking, uh, eventually Brooke decided to uh, use his magic to uh, detect the presence of uh, magic in the air. I'm mainly uh, interested in the, in the three items that have just been uh, acquired by the party. And uh, um, as he learned that... Uh, uh, two of the three items were magical. Uh, he also felt something uh, in the ground uh, and uh, something magical in the ground. And that's when the party was uh, uh, attacked by roots that emerged from the dirt and started uh, uh, being uh, hostile towards you. We're picking up from there. Let me bring back the table on OBS. And load in the map. And we'll start with everybody rolling initiative. Alright, so you all wake up to being strangled. <laughs> You're completely immobilized.
Uh, was it raining this day? Not today. It it's been, been raining the pretty much the uh, your entire stay in Kaleon and the first day of travel. <laughs> no! I like how I can just be in the tree. Because I've established that's where I <laughs> what typically if the, am. What if the tree is the source? I have had that thought. <laughs> 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 one of these days, Pip is just Ooh. going to go to sleep in a tree. And oh, <laughs> nice natural one. Oh, right, initiative. It's okay, your natural one still might actually beat mine. <laughs> we'll find that's what happens when you have such a massive negative. Nope, I'm not. Here is the grid. Mm. Impressive, actually. <clears throat> Wait, I'm still better than you, James. How? <laughs> he because might not I have a bonus to survival, too. but he can do good <laughs> initiative. <laughs> can always take the alert feed. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh they're tiny. cute! This is gonna That's be a easy, great mini. Be worried. <laughs> yes, yeah, look at the detail. Is, is cute. It's trying to do. Hurt <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, your little teeth. Let's see if this works. <laughs> nope. Oh, squeak. I'm missing Brooks' oh, initiative oh, yep, and squeaks. Sorry. Uh, I forgot about Squeak. Alright. Let's do that. There's five, right, Jonas? Yep. Did you already do it? Oh, Wait, I think you have to do it, actually, don't you? <laughs> oh, jeez. Does that count? Natural 20 on initiative. Does it count for, for, uh... Squeak, you mean? I mean, you rolled a 20. <gasps> yeah. Squeak's squeak 20s are your 20s. One. Yeah. Wait, really? Yeah. Your first yeah, natural zero, 20s zero. from Squeak? Yeah. Is it is an initiative <laughs> roll for Squeak? Oh, you haven't rolled any nat ones either. That's... He's never rolled dice. <laughs> it's my first time rolling a die. <laughs> uh... Oh, yeah, apparently I haven't rolled any nat ones either. I've only rolled nat 20s. <clears throat> then uh so the only ones who were already awake were brook and tekka but with uh um all all of you are awakened by uh by them um we actually haven't done like what do you guys do to wake them up what do you what do you yell or say uh well i would probably take something whatever is on the ground and throw it at the next person next to me hoping they would wake up and then pull my sword and my shield. Are you throwing a rock at Alex? Well, not a hard, but just so they wake <laughs> up. <laughs> Words are hard. You're probably gonna throw it a little harder. Words, Words are hard. hard. The rocks are harder. Tekka okay. will definitely start shouting. Teacher! Talix! Pip! Wake! Alex just stretches. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it there looks like you've got crawling this. down your throat. <laughs> 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 just roll over. Uh, whatever it is. Like. No thanks. So all that all this means is that all of you are awake, but the uh, the ones who were not, uh, uh, everyone but Brook and Tekka will be still prone. Uh, and then we begin with uh, Squeak being. <laughs> The first one. Eh? What's going on? Huh? Ah, crap. Ladarian roots. <laughs> <laughs> this requires a Ladarian rat. Cute. <laughs> and, uh, uh, Squeak is going to stretch and, uh, let's see. <laughs> I'm on a tree. <laughs> I think that Squeak will... Hmm... Ow. Uh... I think that... 
Uh, 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 <laughs> um, I'm sorry. No pressure. You haven't had do. you haven't had uh, a whole week to think about this encounter. <laughs> I think Squeak is going to um uh, turn invisible. <laughs> Sensible, yeah. Uh, and Squeak will hold its move action. Okay. The, uh, and when is it moving? Uh. When <laughs> um, <laughs> when Pip puts him down on like lower on the ground. Okay. Then moving okay, on to Pip. I got through it. <laughs> it's still you, <laughs> <No>. though. <laughs> okay. Pip. Uh, okay. So first of all. Do I see like a writhing root just sort of on the ground next to this fire right here? And second question, is there actually a bedroll there? Or Yes. Okay. You guys own exactly three bedrolls in total. Okay. Look at the attention to detail that I have in this campaign. I appreciate it. <laughs> then... uh, but yes, you do see the, the roots are sort of like Picture them like a, a group of, sort of like a group of snakes, um, just uh, all entangled together and uh, slithering and coming out of from the ground. And okay. very obviously reaching towards the group. I Pips. love these minis. Can I just say that again? <laughs> They're really cool. So good. All right. I know what I'm going to do. Pip is going to uh, climb down the tree. Um and sort of like get to the lowest branch just enough to where he can put Squeak down. Uh, can I do that with my movement? Do I need to make a check or anything? Uh, I'd say you're proficient enough in climbing trees. It's okay. just on the way down from on the, you've already climbed. Uh, so yeah, you can you can get down with your movement just fine. That would be how many feet would you be up from the ground when you sleep normally? I mean... 10, 15, way 10, higher. probably. Sure. <clears throat> so, uh, it's your movement, and because you're climbing, it's... Uh, you don't have a climb speed, right? No. So it would be twice the movement for 20 feet. Okay. Trees are Pip's favorite terrain. <laughs> <clears throat> Pip would just come over a little bit further, and then uh, Squ Squeak has been speaking in Pip's mind, saying, All right, now put me down. Let me at him. I'm gonna bite him so good. And put Squeak on the ground. Squeak will uh, go ahead and use that move action mm -hmm. to run over to this this sort of tangling root thing. And uh, Squeak, Pip is going to use his action to have Squeak bite down on it. Hey. Uh, Squeak is invisible, but he is not going to have advantage on the stack attack roll. Mm, interesting. All right. Nine. <laughs> and unfortunately, a nine is not enough to hit. So Squeak, as as Squeak tries to bite down on the the roots. Uh, turns visible, and uh, you just hear, "Ah, crap!" <laughs> okay, that's it. <laughs> All right, then moving on to Tekka. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> so a few seconds before the roots actually burst out of the ground, uh, Ollie would send the vibrations in the ground and uh, curl up in a little little uh, <laughs> ball. <laughs> Trying to protect himself. Uh, and then Tekka, seeing these very spooky roots, uh, is going to try and pull, pull Walt all over them. Uh, do I need to roll for that? I'm going to match. You're trying to do what? Pull the Walt. The, the what? 
Okay. Use He's pole vaulting to, over to, it. To, like, jump over oh. them. Like, put it in the ground and... Ah, uh, hmm. Is that an acrobatics move? Pole vaulting sounds like an acrobatics thing to me. Yeah. Or athletics. I don't know. Whatever you think. It's a little bit of both. <laughs> yeah, I guess. So either or, or... I... I'm gonna say acrobatics. acrobatics. Or... Okay. Fifteen. Oh, Fifteen oh, is good. Yeah? Nice. Yeah, so Tekka just... Uh, steadies... His, le his feet, and then just charges ahead, strikes the pole in the ground, and vaults over the roots. Uh, is he allowed to do anything more? Does he have an action left, or was that both in one? Normally, checks uh, require yeah. an action. Yeah, I I'm fine with that. Uh, I just I wasn't sure. But ultimately, I think in this case, it's not like you. Uh, I I'd like to take an attack anyway. I'd say it wasn't your action, because it wasn't particularly difficult to do. Okay. You didn't go too far or go over a tall obstacle, you know? Okay, That's, well, thank you for being so generous. Um, so yes, as, I like, am a generous god. <laughs> so as part of his quarter staff is like still halfway connected to the ground, he's just gonna like slide across the ground and try to like just jam some of the roots. Striking them okay. with the square staff. Okay, let's see here. Multi tool Swiss knife attack. Yeah. Are you hitting them with the staff of the Arch Magi part? Exactly. It does bonus force damage. <laughs> <laughs> 70. 17 hits. Nice. Okay, and let's see. That's eight damage. Hey, solid damage on uh, this one. So you smack the roots from above. Whack. Some of them, um, some of them break under the under the blow. Uh, bits and pieces of the roots kind of dry up and fall down, but uh, there's some some in still. Uh, in this, uh, in this group that are still moving. All right, yeah, Techno's just gonna <laughs> stand guard, uh, prepare for incoming attacks. End of turn. Okay. On uh, uh, initiative twenty. I mean, we've never used these, but they are over here. Yeah. Measuring distance. Uh, actually, no need. I can see that with my own eyes. So put them back. <laughs> <laughs> Brief appearance from the measuring tools. Uh, but that is going to be everybody. So I need everybody to roll a strength check. Uh, ah! uh, oh, so I mean, a strength saving throw. Being ah! prone, if I remember correctly, is not uh, um, will not affect that. Prone, pro, prone. Disadvantage on attack rolls. No, okay, you don't have a disadvantage on that. I'm on a roll. Well, let's see. Good luck to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, no. We were not prepared. Alex, let's go. Okay. <laughs> In so, sleep. <laughs> everybody except for Talix. Is uh, uh, currently restrained. Uh, that's one to actually Pip isn't. Oh, too far away. Mm -hmm. So here is how this is going to go. Is these, and then, pardon. Ah, there we go. Uh, let's say this one occupies this plate. Ah. <laughs> okay, there we go. Ah, it's on my head. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
bullet, burn them with fire. I mean... <laughs> I wish to dunk it into the fire pit. <laughs> there we go. Could this root just appear? Yes. So, uh, as uh, these two um, move into uh, each focusing, one on Brook, one on Tekka, uh, and and another one, uh, another group, another uh, bundle that emerges from the ground and goes for uh, for Pontifex, uh, um, <clears throat> all of them. Um, the way they move, it's not a, a across the ground. Uh, they they don't go over the ground, but it, they clearly are connected to something beneath, and so they sort of dig. Uh, uh, in order to move uh, uh, sideways. And they start to envelop themselves around the ankles and in Pontifex's case, around the arms uh, uh, of three of you. Another one, and I don't know why I deleted it, also came here, uh, she popped up from the ground to go after Talix, but Talix was like just fast enough to sort of like roll out of the way. Uh, poke it away with his stick. Um... Those of you who uh, fail the saving throw, again, minus Pip and um, Squeak has also not been grabbed, are considered restrained. So we have the little tokens over here if we want to uh, grab them. Do we have a restrained one? Yes. Yes. So you can grab Speed those becomes and place zero. them over your... Uh, mm -hmm. Speed becomes Attacks zero. Against... Attacks against uh, you have an advantage, and your attacks have disadvantage, and also disadvantage on dexterity saving throws. Except Squeak. Oh? Squeak and Pip. You're... Mm. Why yeah, Squeak? They... Mm. There's no plant on you? I guess. Oh. I see. What did you say? They have advantage on us? They have advantage attacks against on attacks. you have advantage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we move on to Pontifex's turn. Pontifex, you... Uh, <laughs> you have uh, uh, these roots grabbed, uh, wrapped around uh, parts of your body. Um, and because they're holding you so tight, you're, and your speed is zero, you're unable to actually get up either. Yeah. Uh Have have any of these been hit? Number uh, one. Number one, yes. Okay. Uh, well, doing the flamethrowing thing is not really going to work whenever I'm restrained. So uh, I think he just is like woken up by this thing, you know, or leaping on and grabbing his head or whatever, and he's like, uh, bah! And, uh, <laughs> from uh, from the. Uh, the whatever the necklace he like looks at the at the one that was hit and uh i think this is gonna work <laughs> 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 and uh yeah he goats number one uh <laughs> it needs to make a dc 14 wisdom save oh it was nice. beautiful i didn't didn't, didn't expect it such at all. an epic epic spell sound yeah, prepare because i'm using that a lot do you say wisdom <laughs> saving throw? Uh, yeah, wisdom saving throw, okay. DC 14. I have an 11. What effect is this? Uh, this is Toll the Dead. He's he's goat bleeding again. Okay. Uh, uh yeah. So, D12. He's affected. Uh, D12. baby number. Three. The baby number is actually sufficient uh, to destroy nice. this bundle of roots, uh, which... Freeze Brook as a result. <laughs> I think hey. he like goat bleats it and the, the things just like wither away from the necrotic damage. Mm -hmm. uh, your pond effects is like faces muffled by the vines. It's just like, get it off, get it off of me. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like flopping around on the ground. Uh, I, I, think that, I think it's everything. Yeah, it's everything. Then we're moving on to Brook. Just in time. All right. Yeah, that is actually just in time. All right, who do I help first? Oh, are you still sleeping? <laughs> no, he's just very <laughs> slow to act, apparently. 
<laughs> Good that you didn't say. I think we've established on multiple occasions that Talix is like a rough Danny. waker. Yeah, he's not. Yeah, not a morning person. Twenty. Twenty-five. And I would uh, like it. I'm just saying, Talix is the only one who's not restrained right now. He goes back. Uh, okay. Twenty. I'm dead. <laughs> His belly flops the roots. As everyone uh, knows, <clears throat> if your roots are weak over, to being tackled. Dead. Yeah, exactly. All right, I will do. Get him! Come on! Come on! Get him! An attack roll with my sword. Okay, that hits. Um, twenty-three absolutely hits. Guy. That's 12 damage. Yeah. Um, that guy is also freed by the roots as uh, um, Brooke's uh, sword uh, slashes from above and easily cuts through the entire bundle of roots. <laughs> Thank you. Alright, that's my turn. Hi. No Moving on to. Ah. My time. Okay. Thank you. Just placing these in your chests. The roots turn. So number three is going to attack Pontifex, and this is at uh, advantage. Uh, um, just let me know hit? if it would hit. Uh, an eleven would not hit. Okay. Uh, so it does not. <laughs> I think it's just like plinking away at his little armor plates. Mm hmm. Yeah, the, uh, the armor is uh, very diff clearly very difficult for these roots to get past. So, despite the fact that they have a good hold on you, uh, that's pretty much all they can do. Uh, Talix, you're not restrained, but you are prone. So, the attack is still with advantage against you. Although. Um, so Talix awakes. His backpack, his staff, his shield, all of that would be at his feet. Um, but he does, under his... Whatever that is, I guess it's not quite a pillow. Whatever he's resting his head on. Uh, will be his orb. So he's going to reach for that. After looking around and finally kind of parsing what's going on. Uh... And he's going to try to... Oh. It's still my turn, though. Oh, sorry! <laughs> I thought you were telling me it was my turn. My bad. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, Into the this, fire uh... he goes. <laughs> <laughs> this root is Punishment. going to attack you. And because your opponent is going to be with advantage, but also before he does that, uh, the order doesn't actually matter, but I'll do it first. Um, as a bonus action, it will try to grab you. So I need another um, strength saving throw from you. Uh, uh, which is why you do this? Not enough. Uh, so this root has also taken hold uh, of uh, uh, of Talix, and then it starts to to batter him with the roots. Uh, Eighteen to hit. Uh, I I don't hear you if you're talking. That that hits. Okay okay. Yay my first damage. <laughs> Four bludgeoning damage. I'm unconscious. <laughs> <laughs> and now we move on uh, to your turn. So what I said before all that uh, can I? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh oh. Okay. Uh, so, even though I'm wrapped in vines, Talix is going to reach and grab that, uh, that ball of amber. Mm hmm Alright. It's everything from before except the getting up part. Uh, he's just gonna panically shout out, Uh, go back! Go back to where you came from! And he's going to use his, uh, his channel divinity again. 
Because it works on plants too. Oh. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> and it's going to affect both of these and anything else within 30 feet that maybe. I guess it has to be. Yeah, I have to see them. So just these two. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. As an action, you present your symbol, invoke the name of your deity. Each beast or plant yes. creature that can see you within 30 feet of you must make a wisdom saving throw. Okay. Oh, I guess, yeah, they, if they see me. Okay. I can tell you. Um, okay. Oh, there it is. Uh, are you specifically not targeting Ollie and uh, Squeak? <laughs> uh... Because I would let I that suppose, happen. Like, by the wording, yeah. it affects everybody, but I figure you can, like, choose not yeah, to. Yeah, I, I would... If, as long as I can, I would choose mm -hmm. not to affect them. But you are, like, focusing everything, you know, on... on I'm sure they see me all... as friends anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we'll uh, see about that. Uh, but yeah. you do you do focus your effect on uh, everything within your view. And uh, yeah. you can feel that uh, uh, as the... As the divine power wash, washes over you and throughout the area, uh, you can see that the plants, the roots that are currently um, holding you and Pontifex down, are not letting go. Uh, mm. But instead, you guys have camped in an area. Um, this this um, most of the swamp so far has been full of uh, all kinds of uh, plants. Uh, many of them. Uh, even even come in uh, beautiful colors and uh, um, sometimes impressive sizes. And you see that there is this one this one shrub um, with a beautiful purple flower on top of it. Um, that was just a few feet away from from your uh, your campsite. Uh, it it uh, uproots itself and uh, begins to approach you. Uh, so you. Are in control of a new friend. Oh, <laughs> a shrubbery. And uh, uh, that's honestly beautiful. I'm going to say for for e for our ease um, that this thing will act on your turn, and I am about to send you on Discord. It's uh, it's stat block. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> Gives you a one leaf salute. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, uh, I would just kind of plead with it. Ah, oh, help, please. And so it can't even quite make its way. Well, I guess it could make its way here. Yeah. Okay. It just goes enough. All right, well, it makes 1d4 attacks. That's interesting. So this plant will reach out with whatever it's reaching out with. <laughs> uh, it's, with it's basically with its just trying to touch fronds. it with its flowers. Okay. Ooh. Cool, it's going to make four attacks. Four right. friendship frond attacks. <laughs> friendship frond. And it has plus two to hit. I should have added that, but... Okay, so... Two of those hit. Okay. And... So it'll do... A d8 of necrotic damage for each. Dang. So, as it hits, I guess it, the roots kind of wither away. Yeah, it's a, sort of a similar effect to, to what Pontifex did. Uh, it's like it's accelerating their own, uh, their own aging, and uh, uh, part of the roots are just de decomposing in front of your eyes. Not enough to free you, but uh, this, this little, or rather, this giant orchid has come to the rescue. At the top of Beautiful. the initiative, uh, if, if you're done, yeah, we're back to squeak. Uh, okay. It didn't work. It didn't work. 
comes back to Pip. <laughs> and, it was not uh, on purpose. Uh, that's gonna end Squeak's turn. <laughs> okay. And then Pip. And then Pip. Uh, Pip will say, Uh, um, kill it with fire, Professor? You sure? I would, but I can't see anything. Okay. <laughs> Pip is going to try and cast Create Bonfire on the the <laughs> root that's that's on the Professor and try not to get the Professor in it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. <laughs> <laughs> it's not technically occupying my space, I'm yeah, assuming. Yeah, 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 it's uh, technically not. Technicalities. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, uh, so that's a dexterity saving throw. Dexterity saving throw. What is its dexterity? Oh, I have a nine total. Nine, that fails. Uh, so Pip just extends his left hand forward and that uh, metal ring on it, on his uh, index finger sort of sparks this, this bright green. And uh, in that space where the roots are uh, is this flickering green flame that lights up and starts to eat away at the, the roots for seven fire damage. And there the fire stays. All right. Uh, with uh, all the plants that you've encountered so far in this swamp, have all been uh, clearly adapted to um, to thriving in an area that is so uh, full of water at all times. And it seems that fire is not as effective um, against a plant like this as it would on like drier plants. Um, well, I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it doesn't mm -hmm. burn up like you'd expect it to. Uh, but it still it still burns up some bits and pieces of the roots that start falling down. Okay, Pip is just going to concentrate on that fire and keep it rolling there, uh, mm -hmm. and also it's going to make his way a bit further over here because he feels a bit a bit alone in that direction. And let's pretend that the Jamuel is not in exactly that square. <laughs> Oh you no! Just lit the campfire. <laughs> Campaign over. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you come all the way here. All right, good. Is that everything? That's it. Pekka, uh, Pekka, you are no longer restrained. Boop. Yeah. Thank you, Brooke. Uh, yeah. Uh, so Tekka will uh, open his pouch and take out a torch with uh, a metal hold and he's going to light that on fire and then run towards Talix. Uh, but I'm guessing that's two actions so he can't do much else. Ooh, is lighting a torch a, uh, an action? I, I don't know. What you would call an act with an object? Torch if you, a torch burns for one hour. Right, there's object interactions, oh, but you also you have to doing... point out of the backpack. Yeah, what are you doing to light it? Like, if you're just you're holding stuck... up to the campfire. Okay, yeah, that, that's, that should be kind of fast. But you do have to get it out, that's true. Yeah, Usually I would call object, it an action. Uh, yeah, object interactions w would specifically cover that kind of thing, where you like pass by an object uh, with your movement and you do something with it. Uh, and I'm pretty sure I learned recently that actually pulling an item out of your backpack is not an object interaction, but it's free. Um, really? Right, it was like on my DM screen and I commented on it. Let me just double check. Just to make it clear, I'm okay with it not seeing something more <laughs> happening. <laughs> um, okay, well, considering you have to pull it out of the backpack and also light it on fire as you go, I would say that overall you are out of an action on this turn. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, so uh, Tekka will just be dashing ahead with a torch, but not be able to reach the root in time. Okay. That's the end of his turn. 
Alright. On initiative count 20. Boop, boop, boop. I need both Talix and Pontifex to do another strength saving throw. Oh well, oh, my uh, oh, my dice oh, literally oh, rolled God. out of the tray. <laughs> I've never seen that. Happen. <laughs> it like did. came launching out of the dice tower and flew <laughs> off to the side, and then hit a nat one. <laughs> my first nat one. <laughs> that was uh, that was a magical nat one. Yeah, okay. and that one had some heat on it. So both are there Alex... yet more of these? Hmm? Oh, go on. Both Talix and Pontifex, uh, the roots that have taken hold of you, uh, drag you into the ground and uh, out of sight. Uh, huh? Although Tekka, Tekka gets an opportunity attack on the roots. <laughs> yes, please. And, and so does the, the orchid. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is bad. Yeah. This I'd is fun. So. Son Neither of, uh... hits. Nope. <laughs> Everything is fine. They're taking us to meet their managers. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord of the Underswamp. It's okay. I have a little shovel. <laughs> Dig your way out. <laughs> a little trowel. Wait, didn't you trade in your shovel? Uh, he no. tried it to. It was rejected. Yeah, Glimmer <laughs> was not interested. Little did you know at the time they were rejecting you for your own benefit. <laughs> okay, so uh, Talix and Pontifex are currently out of sight. Uh, um, although there is kind of a hole that reaches <coughs> down a little bit, so you can still see, um, in Pontifex's case, you, see, you still see his feet king kicking up from the ground, and in Talix's case, uh, <laughs> uh, you see his hat. <laughs> <laughs> You see, like, the little boots wiggling. <laughs> uh, uh, both of you are, besides being restrained, you're also blinded and deaf and, and uh, cannot breathe. Lovely. Uh, I might be able to breathe, <laughs> actually. Is, is this like, like a... For a few while, a while. Pontifex, it's just, breathing is different. Yeah, is I actually like think it says I can uh, uh, no, I can breathe underwater. So never mind. This is a way is underwater. Swamp. <laughs> Unless it's really wet. It if you rule it, then wet. he can breathe under there for an hour. If we're in like a bog type thing, I'll give you like half an hour. Soaking in the water through his skin. <laughs> yeah, you can... gain half an hour of breathing. Nice. So we're not under dirt so much as we are under murky water right now. It's 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 just muddy. Ah. Uh, Okay. You guys were sleeping here, so it's not like super wet. Um, but yeah, it's not like they this pulled you through solid spread. earth. It's mud. <laughs> yeah, Pontifex okay. brought up an interesting point. So he's getting like, not, I mean, he doesn't have thirty minutes to live. Spoiler. I mean, frogs. <laughs> you underestimate my armor class. <laughs> <laughs> uh, either way, Pontifex, it's your turn. Uh, um. So I am. I'm prone? Am I still prone? Uh, you're no longer prone. No, you're upside down. Okay, so <laughs> I'm, I'm restrained. You are blinded, restrained, and blinded, deafened. and deafened. And as far as, like, breathing, I guess... <sighs> How does it go about casting spells, like, normally when you're underwater? Or, like, suffocating in general? Uh, uh, you aren't I mean. able to, uh, you aren't able to cast spells underwater that have a somatic comp or a verbal component unless you can breathe underwater. Okay. Uh, which I can. Right. Everything else is fine. Um, okay. I'm gonna say that Pontifex can still cast spells in this situation, but Talix cannot. Well, I probably can't because I'm blinded and every spell requires you to be able to see the target at least. Every one you have. Okay. I think, like, literally every spell that's not self basically says a target you can see. Yeah, most spells do. Uh, 
these plants, uh, since I've had one squirming on me for a while, uh, how how water dense would you say these plants are? Well, enough to resist fire damage. So a lot, definitely more than most plants. Okay, so if I were to remove up to 10 gallons worth of water in a 30 foot cube, would that sound like an educated decision? <laughs> to kill them? Uh, maybe, maybe not to kill, that'd be a great outcome, but just does it sound like an effective thing to do? I'm gonna say yes. Yeah, I'll cast destroy water. I destroyed 10 gallons worth of water. Uh, and, and he targets a yeah, container, Yeah, just 10 right? gallons worth of water. Do what? He targets a container, I think? Uh, yeah. Can the hole that I've been dug into count as a container? <laughs> 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 yeah, I'll blow a spell slot on this. This is great. They've yes. made the container. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Okay, I destroyed they 10 gallons of water in there. I willingly forfeit my water breathing. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna say roll a d10, and we're gonna use that as damage. <laughs> okay, hell yeah. Now, um, I want Pontifex to succeed at this. But just thinking in terms of physics... <laughs> Bow. <laughs> wouldn't, like, dry, brittle ground just collapse? <laughs> It if would. it just has no, so he's, yeah. He's just destroying the water inside of his own hole right well, now? Well, it's, yes. it's 10 gallons of water in an open container, so I don't think I'm, like, destroying the water beneath the ground. It's just whatever water is in this container that they've made. Okay. So just any any amount of water that's in this hole. We're gonna go with it, because it's cool. Uh, and <laughs> we did 7 damage? So in yeah. terms of dehydration... Uh, seven <laughs> is exactly enough to kill these people. <laughs> uh, yes. So you are you are still yeah. currently stuck on the ground, but uh, in t but you're no longer restrained. And in terms of digging yourself out, um, it takes uh, it, it, it just takes twice your movement. Okay, yeah, I've got thirty feet of movement because I'm not prone, or no, twenty feet of movement. I yeah, think it is really slow, but I'm not prone. So is that able to like get me above ground? Uh, yes. It's just enough to, like, get you to turn uh, back right side up uh, and, uh, like, get your arms out. You have, like, your torso out of the hole. Yeah, I think, like, from the little hole in the ground, you hear Pontifex just, like, make noises as he's muttering <laughs> magic stuff uh, while upside down and his little feet are wiggling and you just <laughs> see, like, a big flash of blue. And then the whole ground like sinks a little bit and then he kind of like writes himself. Uh, and I think he's still standing in the hole, but he's like, his head is poking out of the top yeah. of it now. <laughs> <laughs> he says, don't worry, I've got it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> moving on to Brook. Um, uh, I can't see any part of the plant anymore, right? If you were to go all the way up to the hole and see where like Talix is being currently dragged down, um, if you jumped into the hole, you could reach them. Uh, you can see the roots that are still, uh, like, pulling him down. You wouldn't be able can to I reach them. Can I still see Talix? Can you what? Can I still see Talix yeah, if I look at the head. hole? Can I grab it? Ah, uh, you can't reach down enough, deep down enough. So the only option I have is to jump onto Talix's head? Doomba him. <laughs> Alright, I will go actually to the... Um, I will go to the hole. Kneel down. And I would like to use Speech of Beast and Leaf. And say, if you don't bring my friends back up, we will come back and tear down this entire swamp. <gasps> <laughs> or tear down. I think that's the right word. Communicate. We'll destroy every gallon of water in this entire swamp. You can understand the meaning of your words. Okay. You have advantage on, on all charisma checks you make to influence them. Roll intimidation <clears throat> with advantage. Okay. It's 
That's a 16. Okay. Uh, and that will be your check for, I mean, your action for, for your turn. Yep. Allow me to, I locked your token earlier, but um, uh, we're going to use here, I'm just going to temporarily move Talix's mini out of the way. We're going to use his particular spot here um, <coughs> as like, that's where the hole is. Are you guys laughing? Uh, it will become a life's work uh, to every day destroy 80 gallons of water from this swamp until it is barren and I have a long life and boundless patience. <laughs> 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 okay, so uh, Brooke, at the end of your turn, uh, judging from uh, uh, from the pain, the noise that Satalix is making down in the hole, uh, it doesn't seem like your attempt was sufficient to deter the plant. So, Talix. Well, uh, not a lot I can um, do, I guess. No, 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 it's my turn. You're, you're getting oh, hit. Wait, did you say insufficient? Insufficient. Yeah. Uh, so I don't believe 20 me, huh? to hit for 4 bludgeoning damage. Okay. While, uh, ah! <laughs> more of these emerge from the ground. Oh, we gotta get out of here. <laughs> Brook, natural twenty. <laughs> That's what the plant does in, in response. Uh, seven bludgeoning damage for Brook. And Pip, 17 hit? Yeah. My Five. first damage. Ah! <laughs> Five bludgeoning damage. Oh. Can you repeat the amount of bludgeoning damage one more time, please? Uh, was it seven, seven for Brook? Yeah. Uh, Talix! <laughs> You're in a situation. Yep. Uh, can I use an action to just try to break out? Yes, you can re-attempt your strength saving throw. Okay. Eleven mm -hmm. is not enough. Rip. Uh, what about your orchid friend? Can I do any? Can I? I believe it has a movement speed of ten, is this, right? Isn't this underground, though? Uh, yes, but it is. There's still the parts above the gra above, like in the hole, that are finishing dragging Talix down. So just like Brook could see them, uh, so can the orchid. Right. Uh, it would have to jump into the hole, but it's uh, it's your friend. Sure. Okay, so it'll make a single attack. Oh! <laughs> Is that a, does that count? Yes, it's a critical. All right. So it'll do... Double necrotic damage. Look at it go. It... Is that number four? Uh, yeah, that's enough to kill it's it. It's ni nine total. Nine necrotic. Yeah, that's, en right. that's enough to kill the roots that are um, pulling you. Uh, which, I said the orchid was acting on your turn. Uh, uh, so you still have, you would still have your turn to act. Uh. Um, and like I said, to pontifex, uh, you can dig yourself used... out with. Uh... Oh, you need to use your action, but you have your movement. All right. Yeah, I'll try to. Uh, after feeling them kind of go limp around me, Talos is just going to desper desperately scramble and claw his way back up. Okay, and just like. Uh... Huh. What? <laughs> He's trying to scramble his way back up. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Just like Pontifex did, um, 
Alex re-emerges uh, from, from the ground, just the upper part of his body for now, but uh, uh, he's back out. Uh, it's Quick's turn. All right. Uh, oh, boy. Uh, all right. All right. Let me try again. I'm going to dive on him. <laughs> and Squeak is going to try it and rip his way into this this route. So uh, that actually ends Squeak's turn after his movement, and then Pip has to use his action to have Squeak attack. Okay. It's a sneak attack with Squeak attacks. <laughs> Squeak doesn't get sneak attacks. It's a squeak attack. <laughs> ah! Sorry. No. I'm crazy. All right. So... Here we go. Here comes the bite. Oh! Oh! <gasps> oh. Twenty-one hits. Okay. Uh, so that's going to be D four plus three piercing damage. And uh, how does how does this plant feel about poison? Um, this probably not great. Is not resistant to poison. It'll have to make a Constitution saving throw. Uh, first, sorry, I didn't write it down. Five damage. My marker is running out of ink. <laughs> uh, what saving throw? Constitution. Constitution. Blah. Six. That fails, so it takes. 3d6 poison damage, strangely, water, from that actually. bite. <laughs> what? For a 12. <laughs> uh, okay. It really wow. is a sneak attack. That's an interesting <laughs> uh, normal animal animal familiar you have. It's a fifth Dying level rogue that Squeak okay. is. <laughs> yeah, as Squeak bites down into the roots, uh, um, even when a snake dies and, like, uh, uh, rolls itself up, belly up, um, all the roots just fall over and like uh, to a uh, roll a little bit in the ground and then they stop moving. <laughs> Squeak unclamps his mouth from the from the plant and you just see that the plant viscera spray out everywhere and 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 Squeak uh, says, "You don't mess with my pip." And um, let's see, will Pip do anything else? Probably <laughs> reach down and and uh, make a few magic stones. Okay. Moving on to Tekka. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> what to do now? Hmm. We have to go. This place is not safe. I agree. Great. Get everything you can. Uh, so Tekka will rush over to the, his bedroll and try to pack everything and just grab everything in his arms. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd say that takes your full turn uh, to grab everything yeah. you own. Agreed. Like your, your entire turn. action. Mm-hmm. Okay. On uh, initiative count 20. Um, well, nothing visible is going to happen, but you can, the roots seem more vicious than ever. Uh, let's move on to Pontifex. There's still just this one root left behind the uh, brook yes. that we can see, right? Mm -hmm. And no one's done anything to it, right? Uh, that's correct. Okay. Um, can I make some kind of, like... Well, no, a check would be an action, huh? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, whatever. He'll, uh, he'll like, look around uh, from his little hole. His head is poking up out of the ground, so his head is probably, like, a foot total elevated off the ground, and then he's, like, eye level with this other root behind Brooke's <laughs> ankles. And uh, he's like, You're oh, there the you world. are, you little bugger. It's in the world the way Squeak does. <laughs> yeah, uh, and he's going to, uh, he's going to hold up his, um, his staff, and 
kind of like swirl his hand around the end of it with the the kind of murky like black contaminated diamond uh and a whole bunch of like elements are gonna start swirling out of it uh like a roulette wheel and like changing form um <laughs> until he settles on one uh which one can i settle on um i'm gonna roll a d6 to decide what do <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's like spinning like the, the Wheel of Fortune. Uh, and then it, he's gonna hurl a ball of acid at him. Huh. Uh, for this to attack roll? <laughs> <laughs> this one's second that one. <laughs> oh, <come> no. <laughs> oh, wait, no, I have a hero. Can I, can I spend it? Sure. For an inspiration, I mean. Because yeah, yeah. I'm probably about to get another one, so there's over time to do it. Yeah, do it. Yeah. Uh, I'll roll the thing. We have decided that we uh, have to toss them into the into the castle thing. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, for for them to be valid. Do you want me to? I already rolled it. Do you want yeah, me no, to use this because no, no, it's no. kind of bad? Toss it in or just there. do it again. Okay. Mm. Does this fit? Although no, you need to be made small. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's just gone. <laughs> okay. There we go. Uh, a, a 15 plus 6, so 21? 21 hits. Yeah. Uh... Lion. Fistful of dice. Uh, 18 points of acid damage. Okay. 18 uh, absolutely obliterates his roots. <laughs> um. He just like threads the needle and throws this like ball of corrosive acid like right between Brooke's leg and just <laughs> like absolutely trucks this thing with it. There's nothing left of it. It's just consumed by the acid. Uh, I think he was intending for it to like dissolve fizzling. it, but instead it just kind of blunt forced <laughs> blew it to pieces. <laughs> Oh, and then he's gonna start clambering out of the hole. Okay. One sec. Yeah. All right. You're very good at throwing. Looking at the small <laughs> part of my legs you have to throw through. As a reaction. <laughs> because they're just absolute tree trunks. <laughs> yep. <laughs> just look at it. <laughs> As a reaction. Look how much space you had to hit her. <laughs> yeah. As a reaction. <laughs> One more bundle of roots comes up from the ground. Oh, buddy. Come at me. <laughs> not sure if that is the right decision. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anything else on your turn, Pontifex? Uh, can I do this as a bonus action? Hold on. I think I might be able to. What is it? Uh, I can just speak. Uh, this thing probably... I don't know. Uh, I can telepathically speak to any creature as long as we share a language. I'm going to try to speak to the thing in Primordial. Or Sylvan. Probably Primordial. Yeah, he'll go with Primordial. I think he's just going to say... Uh, hey, could you, could you not? <laughs> <laughs> in, in telepathy. Okay, they have to share a language to understand? Yeah, this is primordial, so this would be Terran, Aquan, Ignan, and whatever right, the right. wind one is, I don't remember. Okay, yeah. Uh, cool. Is that everything that's happening on your turn? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Brook. Hello? It's your turn. Is there a reason my mini is locked? Yes. Ah. Okay, well because of that. Yep, um, you know what, I'll just get close to it and try to finish this thing off. Maybe? A 13 hits? Ooh. Uh, Where does the die go? Oh. Die go? 
<laughs> Where did that go? <laughs> oh. campaign. <laughs> well, 13 slashing damage. Okay, yeah. 13 destroys them. Huh. That is my turn. Hey. Um, initiative five is the turn of Ravenous new a uh, root, uh, <laughs> and um, no, <laughs> no more roots emerge from the ground. That's the end of combat. Uh, Taika, you're scrambling to pick up his things, and I imagine most of you probably are. Yeah, mm -hmm. tell us yeah. the same. Hmm? He's just gonna grab his bag, or grab his bag, and just hastily stuff everything in. <laughs> and Squeak is. Tell... Oh. No, uh, go tell ahead. the viper to look for any more of those roots or where they came from. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, you're Squeak is yelling. Come on, come on, come on! I'll fight all of you! <laughs> <laughs> we need to find a new place. <clears throat> oh. Oh. Did we see anything else happen before this? Uh, Who was it? Was it Brooke or Tekka? Both of us, actually. I sensed the earth move. That is all. Well, I detected magic, so... If well, do you sense any more? I only can do that for a short amount of time. Wait, technically, it should it's probably still minutes. be up, right? Uh, if you... So you were hit once, yes, and you lost this many hit oh, points, yeah. seven. Uh, roll a concentration check and let's see if you held on to it. What is that again? It's a constitution saving throw. Constitution? Mm-hmm. Detect magic is concentration, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Uh, Brooke, you can still sense some of that same magic. Um, on this spot here, that is not a good color. All right, let me get a red. Uh, in this spot, but like way underground, almost at the limit of your uh, of your magic. Uh, but you don't feel it approaching. You don't feel it like coming closer to the surface. It's just there. Well, it is still here, but it seems to be waiting, so it's probably better to move on. Is everyone okay? It's still there. Let's dig down and kill it once and for all. <laughs> Well, if you want to dig like 30 feet down, you can do that. I think the rest <laughs> of us should leave. <laughs> but Talix is. He's got like a ring of blood around his neck from where he was being strangled and. just looking very bad uh, and very scared. Uh, but he is going to notice the Pip's hurt, and he's going to cast Cure Wounds on him. Aww. Yeah, Pip Pip was, like, nursing his leg where this, this plant had nipped him, and uh, oh, very grateful bad. for your help. Nice. Good thing that doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> Did you roll the wrong die? I rolled a d20. <laughs> d20 healing! Yeah. Hey. There you go. That, that's much better. The D8. Just enough. Uh, Pip says, interrupting Squeak's ranting. Uh, thank you. Hey, I was talking. Shut up, Squeak. We gotta oh. go. Oh, we can't take this. Oh, well, can you check the next area? By any chance, Brooke? So we don't settle around another one of these. Well, then we have that to... are apparently everywhere. Found one by accident. I guess I have like approximately six minutes of this magic left. So if we hurry, we at least have six minutes of kind of knowledge. 
All right. Maybe look for a place a bit higher up. I will hurry to the notes. best of my abilities. Or maybe we all get up in some trees like Pip. I'll share. Oh. Uh, might be able to make some hammocks out of our blankets. Okay, so you're Better packing work. up. Um, you're packing up, grabbing all your things. Uh, you're using Brook to like figure out if there's a place where he doesn't sense that that uh, kind of magic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then, and then you're... we get up in the tree for good measure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so you basically relocate like a good a hundred or two hundred feet over. Uh, you don't travel too far into the the the, uh, the dark forest in the middle of the night. But uh, Brook, every once in a while, you do sense another one of those things beneath you, and you very carefully like navigate around them so you're never directly on top of them. Uh, they do seem to be everywhere. Um, shortly after you guys set off. Uh, the orchid that has uh, um, been helping you, Talix, uh, eventually just settles down and stops following you. Oh, and look out for those flowers. <laughs> there is no reply. <laughs> Apparently. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, who yeah. did you say that to with the flowers? <laughs> All of you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm gonna use. Uh, I'm gonna, oh wait, I can't do that. Never mind. Uh, I wish I could help you, Dalex. Just need some sleep. Let's just make sure we're not directly on the ground while we're sleeping in this swamp, in this jungle, whatever it is. It's a swamp. <laughs> I'm tired. Yeah, I should, should go back to sleep. You had your shift already. I didn't That's have mine. Fun. So, try to wake you up if I should feel anything else. Please. <laughs> it turns out. What... Uh, sorry? You're good. It turns out that despite what Pip might have led you to believe, um, that sleeping in a tree is not the most comfortable thing. Uh, because, uh, yeah, we were gonna... Okay, so we were looking for a place with more than one tree. Talix wants to set up some hammocks. Oh, like is in there, one is another... there enough growth to make that work? Yeah, just oh, yeah. to be no, like a little bit off the ground. Do you have the hammocks? Or like you're gonna use blankets? Yeah, blankets and rope. It's not ideal. Yeah, I guess I'll I'll ask for a check in that case. Um... What sort of check? Oh, God. I mean, I'm I'm driven towards survival. <laughs> of course you are. <laughs> so, like, sleight of hand, maybe? Honestly, there's something to that. I yeah, don't know. That's, that's what I would use for tying knots, uh, so you can pick. Oh, well, I'll pick survival if I have the choice. Um, We're not letting Brooke tie them, right? <laughs> 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 Why don't I not me? Yes, led you all this way so are, far. Are we all tying our own, or? I mean, Talix just has the one blanket himself. I don't know if you're putting him to work on everyone's. I don't know if he has the energy it for will, it. it he is bleeding from his neck and face. So, you know, have some mercy. I mean, I have it an upu fruit, if that would make you feel better. I have bandages, if that would make you feel better. Oh, that's probably a better solution. I have a doll. If you want to hold it. Uh, <laughs> that's a really good support animal. I will actually take out one of the bandages out of my backpack. Taka, can I see Ollie? Oh. <laughs> I'll, pack, I'll put my bandages back into my backpack. Well, the moment we learn the Brook is racist towards gnomes, the entire group has just been shunning him. <laughs> no, I, I will accept your bandaging, Brook. I will huh? appreciate it. Oh, if you want to bandage me up. Back out. <laughs> if you want me to bandage you, sure. <laughs> and I'll start <laughs> well, I figure you have some experience with us. 
not around the neck, but it shouldn't be too different. Just tell me if it's too tight. Just, you know, uh, mm. <laughs> <laughs> a little, just uh, a little, just a finger looser. Okay. Okay. Just you're rocking a man with a bandage. <laughs> Do I get to see Ollie? Hmm. It is Ollie's choice. <laughs> <laughs> What, what does Ollie choose? Um, I mean, he's walking around us. All right. Well, I hear they're very susceptible to disease, so I won't pet him. <laughs> but he is very cute. Don't move too much, or the wound is gonna keep bleeding. They're going to admire hmm. Ollie from a distance. That's okay. I'm sure just a good night's sleep, and this will be very much better all of a sudden. <laughs> But who has blankets? I know Talix has one. I have uh, one. Tech Two. has one, it's not using it. Three. I, I, I mean, I don't think I have. Unless they're in the, I'm, whatever, pack I ca whatever pack I picked. Yeah, Is there a blanket in the bedroll? Probably not, right? But well, you could I use the bedroll itself, couldn't you? Sure, yeah, I will use that. That Third. is actually a good idea. Three hammocks. Pip does not have a blanket. Uh, yeah, if anyone needs a blanket, take a little... Well, I'll give it to someone for a night. Oh, yeah, I've got a blanket and a bedroll. I could give someone one also. Pip wants it, but he normally just sleeps in a he tree, so I don't know. Tree. Yeah, he's right. fine. Okay. So you manage uh, to all sleep in the trees during the night for extra safety. It is colder because you don't have the... Uh, you know, sleeping around a campfire. Um, but it's okay. At least you're safe, and uh, you make it. <clears throat> you make it work. Uh, the rest of the night is going to pass without uh, any more troubles, and you make it to the following morning. Woo. But before <gasps> we continue, uh -huh. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna have uh, uh, we're gonna go on a short break. And then we're Ooh. going to have a flashback moment. Yeah! Oh. Yes. Ooh. All right. So I, will, I will bring back the map of Cleon temporarily for just a little bit so we can see what Pontifex has been up to. Woo! Flashbacks! Flashback! <laughs> Flashback hype. I'll see you Just so I'm aware, we get like a... Do we still get the effects of a long rest even though we had the, the combat? Yes. Yes, you will. Okay. We just sleep in a little bit. That'll make up for it. <laughs> yeah, we do it where it just has to be like a cumulative six hours, I think. It doesn't have to be all at once or anything. Uh, if you are able to sort of like sleep in extra time, then yes. Like in a situation where you're more uh, tight for time, I would say no. But in this case, it, it applies. Yeah. So yeah, I'll see you in about 10 minutes. I got that one. Hello. I'm, I'm a fan of the genre. Hello. 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 Hello, everyone. We are back. I'll I'm sorry. I, did I interrupt that conversation? No, no, you're fine. You're good. Hi. Talking about addictions and how we cope with them. Oh. <laughs> I was eating pineapple, but I'm not addicted to pineapple. I, I think I literally have like... How can cans of pineapple be? juice in my fridge because I have a problem with that as well. Hey. I just drink straight pineapple juice all the time. It's really good. Wait, from yeah. the can? Anyway. <laughs> yeah, I, I, have like, I have like several cans of it in my fridge. Hmm. Feel like, like, there's... Uh, like the dull pineapple juice cans. I feel like there's best like tasting pineapple juice rather than from a can. No? Like in bottles? Yeah, but I can't like like, I don't think they store as well, because yeah. I need it, like, in bulk. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's an addiction, it okay? is a problem, I see. Yeah. I thought you were, like, exaggerating, but you meant it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Here. Well, uh, we learned something new about you, Matt. There's uh, so much to learn. And also, I agree that, like, <laughs> pineapples and pineapple juice is really great. So, um, yeah. As you can see, I brought back the map of Cleon because ooh, flashback. Uh, it is this. It feels um, like it was yesterday. <laughs> because ooh. it was yesterday. Ah, 
Uh, indeed, this is the yesterday for us, but uh, two days ago for your for your carters. Uh, I nearly three at this point. Uh, this is the time when uh, the entire party left to go to the temple to talk to Egon, while um, while Pontifex uh, remained in the tavern to um, to meet with a certain Tabaxi. The Pontifex, you're currently um, alone in the tavern, uh, in uh, uh, on the in the main area uh, with all the tables, mm -hmm. and uh, um, the rest of the group has left, and they have taken Jamuel with them. Uh, so you are like, entirely on your own, <sighs> and uh, eventually. A, a certain tabaxi um, comes into the tavern. Uh, she's very easy to spot, and all, not only because she's uh, um, taller than most humanoids are, um, but you also you kind of hear her before you see her. Uh, she has a lot of uh, earrings and bracelets, and when she uh, ju the mere gesture of uh, opening the door uh, makes a, makes them all like. Um, they all bump into each other and they make this metallic noise. Uh, she steps in, glances briefly around, uh, uh, sees you, and comes over towards your table. Oh, uh, hello. I uh, see you remembered our meeting time, yes? Who do you take me for, Professor? Of course I did not forget. She sits down at the table. Right, uh, uh, well, uh, how are you today? Uh, can you roll an inside check for me? Sure. <laughs> I have the ability to roll the check. Oh, I'm actually That's okay. That's how you start in conversation. Uh, yeah, he's very socially awkward. <laughs> you oh, wow. Bow. <laughs> okay. Incredible. She seems to be in a bad mood. Uh, and yeah, you can tell this asking. even though the, the answer uh, she gives, uh, um, she does like this dismissive gesture with one hand, uh, all of her bracelets just reflecting the light uh, from the window as, uh, as she very obviously lies and says, it is all good. Right, well... Uh... Even when everything is fine, there is still things that could be done to make them better. Um, my uh, companions and I have uh, made our way here to Cleon, uh, as I am Nazaradoran and heritage, and this seems more like a home away from home. And I could not help but notice your uh, interesting facility, we'll call it. Yes, everybody asks about the eye. I'm sure it they is... do. It is not open for visitors, so do not yes, insist. Yes, of course. But uh, what is it? It is an observatory. We watch the sky from here. Uh, well, for fear of pressing too far, uh, what does uh, what does one have to do become employed at it? If it is so secret. If you are looking for a job, uh, we do not have an opening. And um, I see. the uh, Zaya comes over and uh, um, stars in her eyes uh, orders uh, a thunderstorm, which is uh, um, imagine like a a, a coffee uh, with alcohol in it. It's like very powerful. Pick me up. Uh, I will follow her recommendation. One for me as well. Zaya so will uh, go behind the, uh, the counter and uh, uh, a minute later both of you will have uh, uh, a drink on the table. Coffee confirmed to be called coffee. <laughs> well, uh, your name was uh, Stars in Her Eyes? And yours I is believe. Pontifex. 
Uh, yes, Pontifex Vasta Lusalinak. Um, are you originally from Nazridora or were you born here? I... You look so young. Am I really going to be the subject of this conversation? Well, if the eye is not the subject you wish to discuss, then I suppose you are the next most interesting thing. What of your gemstone? Ah. Yes. Uh, he'll he'll pull it out and like slide it on the table over to her. Yeah. Was this? I figured if you were to agree to meet with me for a conversation, and yourself and the eye are off limits uh, topics, I it would make sense if you had something of interest yourself. You place it on the table. Yeah, he places it on the table and like slides it over to her. Mm -hmm. And it's shaped like like a pyramid, like a D four, right? Yeah, it's a it's a it's like a it's a it's a I guess a D four. It's a it's a four faces though, so it's triangular. Yeah, yeah, so D4. Okay, yeah. Sorry, um, I keep thinking of the Pyramid Knight that ruins everything. <laughs> the D5. This pyramid Knight over here, that's a 5. Yeah. So yeah, it's a, it's exactly a D4 shape with, like, very sharp edges and, like, perfect lines. Mm -hmm. It's like a geometrically perfect triangle. Or a pyramid, I guess. Oh, the edges are sharp? Yeah, like, the ends are, like, the corners are extremely pointy and, like, the sides are, like, perfect shears. Mm. So, like... You could probably cut something with it. Like, mm -hmm. it's a, geometrically perfect. Okay. Starts in her eyes, reaches for it, but she doesn't look like she's about to grab it. And instead, she sort of, like, uh, puts just one clawed finger on the on the um, very top of it. Uh, um, and sort of, like, pushes it a little bit so that the, the little pyramid uh, uh, tilts a little bit on one side. And then she, uh, she pulls her arm back uh, and... Uh, you can tell that there's, like, some kind of interest in her eyes. Um, but, strangely, instead, she sort of, like, gives a shrug and uh, uh, changes the conversation and uh, says, I have looked into your name since you introduced yourself to me. As it turns out, a lot of people in Cleon have heard about you. That comes with a long life, I suppose. I also have heard that the last time you were here, you came looking for Jamuel Fleetfoot. Is that correct? Uh, yes, it is an ongoing search. Now, if memory serves, you came through here 11 days ago. And now you are back. Which means, in my opinion, that you found him? Uh, no. Not exactly. If we had found him, he would be with us. You understand. I am but, uh, not so sure about that. He seems to only ever go where, where he wants to go. Not a lot of convincing to be done with that halfling. You sound like you know him well. We had two conversations. Yeah. Then I have merely two more to go, and then we are on better terms. He takes what a is, sip uh, from her drink. What is your interest in Jamuel? I have no interest in him, but I do have an interest in his mind. Ah, a scholar of sorts. I suppose. Well, I, I don't mean to ask these questions and expect answers for free. You can, of course, ask ones of your own. I've, uh, I'm not so good at... Uh, Remembering the important parts of myself to talk about, it is better if I'm prompted by someone else. It comes with the years, you understand. Is there something else you wish to gain from this conversation? Have you... ...found any information where Jamuel currently is? 
on his current whereabouts? Uh, no, not exactly. It depends if you mean physical or metaphorical. Stars in a rise, uh, um, further brow. Or perhaps metaphysical? I don't know. I haven't decided yet. What do you mean? Well, I mean, uh, what really dictates where someone is? Where their physical form is, or where their consciousness is, or where their soul resides, if such a thing exists? Someone could be miles away, and yet be as if next to you with the use of some clever magics. So what to what capacity implying? do you wish? I mean that uh, I have acquired a way to converse with Jemuel, but I have not had the pleasantries of meeting him face to face. Our eyes have not locked, you could say, but we speak fairly regularly. Stars in her eyes leans back a little bit uh, on her chair and says, Fine, if you have a way of uh, of getting in touch with, with him, I have a message for him. Could you deliver it? I could, but there is a somewhat of a delivery fee. If it is money you need, I have plenty. Oh no. Hey, when you have been around as long as I have, you start to lose interest in material worth. No, it is. Uh, I would never ask for something so pedantic. If you wish to have your curiosities peaked and a message sent to Jamuel, perhaps I could even give you a response. But uh, I feel like it is only fair for there to be a price of admission. Admission being the key word. What is your request? I wish for a tour of the eye. <sighs> you have your secrets. We have ours. I feel like it is only fair if we share in them. Roll a persuasion check. I'll take it. You could uh, call this a sharing of research. You may be surprised at what you find. Source in the rise sips from a cup again. Um, she. She looks at you uh, with uh, quite uh, quite the. She seems very serious. In fact, she hasn't smiled the, during the entire conversation. Uh, perhaps it is uh, her current foul mood, uh, or um, perhaps she really means it when she says that uh, uh, the eye is not open for for uh, for visitors. But she ends up shaking her head in the end and says, "I have to turn it down." I cannot. I... It is not like I expect an answer anyway. Not... Not the kind of answer I am waiting for. Perhaps if you give me an inkling of the answer you're wanting, I could tell you if the capacity is capable. And then, of course, you're free to deliberate. I am in no hurry. I am in a hurry. But I do have five more minutes. I suppose I could make time. How about you just give me the message to be passed along and whatever intentions you would like, and uh, we will see where it takes us. I feel there is doubt on your end that I am able to uphold my side of the bargain. Fine. Fine. If I... Tell you what. If you ever actually receive an answer from uh, Jamuel, 
one that is not empty. One that uh, gives me some information. Then uh, send it to me through mail. And if I get it, next time you find yourself here in Cleon, uh, I'll let you tour the... I'll let you to tour the eye. Of course. Not as a visitor, but as a guest. As a friend. I will personally show you around. I see. Well, and uh, he will... Uh... He'll hold up his little golden orb thing and, uh, like, materialize that little magical inkwell pen. Uh, and he's gonna start writing whatever she's saying on, like, uh, he's basically just writing in the air. Uh, like, almost like a hologram kind of note-taking. Whenever you're ready, I can uh, take down whatever you wish to say. Very well. Then, the message I need to deliver to Jamiel is a brief one. Ask him, have you found a solution yet? And tell him it is from me. To ask him if he has found a solution? He will know. In fact... Of course. Since you are helping me out, I suppose I could discuss this with you. You are a... Uh, you are familiar with uh, the elemental planes. It is not I a dabble. question. I, I know the answer. Well, then I will try to keep my modesty to a minimum. You also need to try to keep this information to yourself. Can you do it? Uh, you do not make it this long in life in this sort of practice without knowing how to keep it a secret. I am many things, uh, but a liar is not one, and loose lips is not another. Darcy Narayas taps nervously on the table. Very well. So as you know, we use the obsidian eye to examine the sky. We trace the path of the planes above our heads. It helps us figure out what is around Lidaria and how the planes affect this continent. We are also on the lookout for uh, any other potential land. As we imagine with the discovery of Lidaria, many people wonder if there is something else, not just Plorin and not just Lidaria, but some other world. Anything that happens once happens again. There are other things we are researching. Everything to do with the world itself. We're making sure that, uh, or at least we're trying to figure out, uh, if this land uh, can hold itself together. As you know, many think that the absence of Akanat means that Ledaria is uh, temporary. That the planes that make it up make up the land of this continent um, are bound to eventually shift out of, of balance. You say people believe this? Are you one of them? Do you believe in the necessity of a divine tree to hold a world together? I believe in nothing but solid evidence. So far the evidence does not show that the planes are out of balance. However, there is one particular thing that uh, has been bothering us. She briefly glances around, uh, clears her throat, finishes her drink. You know about these uh, earthquakes, yes? I've read of them and I believe I experienced one not long ago. Yes, there has been one just a few days ago. It particularly hit the eastern side of the peninsula. Well, all of our researches in the years we have spent uh, uh, studying uh, both the sky and the land, uh, asking p uh, questions to the natives of Daria, reading documents from this continent, 
We are pretty sure that these earthquakes have only started about 30 years ago. You know, after we discovered Lidaria. And you believe there is some correlation? The earthquakes even happen as a response to discovery? As a or perhaps as a consequence of something that we have done. We meaning the Plurnans, of course. Now, what I am about to say is, of course, uh, not meant for uh, the ears of the Jade Council. But the Jade Council does strongly believe that the absence of Vakanat is going to doom Ledaria. And I do wonder if perhaps somebody somewhere is willingly making an effort to upset the balance of the planes to, I suppose, prove the point. Ah. Uh, I see what you're saying. You believe the Jade Council is proposing that Vakanath is a necessity for life to exist and is afraid that if there is no Vakanath, and yet this land persists, it will prove them wrong. And so they are making moves to skew the odds in their favor. It is a hypothesis, and like I said, I believe in evidence above everything else. The earthquakes have begun only after we have discovered Ladaria, then there has to be a connection. Hey. Correlation does not equal causation. This is one of the first things that we learn, but your theory is sound enough and is believable enough. I am a follower of the deities, but I am not so naive as to trust any one council's words implicitly. I'm also a, a person of evidence. And uh, I suppose I can give you some assurance if you will take my word that the Jade Council and I do not see eye to eye, and I, I do not report to them. Like I said, I have looked into you. I know a few things. My stances on certain topics is quite publicly known. You certainly are. Now then, the nature of my question to Jamuel is uh, related to what I just told you. I have discussed I have discussed this very same topic with him, but all he has given me was a, a wiggle of his finger and him telling me that he has a solution. Although he refused to elaborate on said so, on said solution. And do you believe that uh, if I were to ask him this question and he were to have an answer? Is it one that he would share with others? Would he accept a middleman, or is this something that should stay strictly between the two of you? Because if necessities, I, I can uh, facilitate a more direct meeting between the two of you. In all honesty, I expect no answer from him in the first place. Jamuel is not nice to people. And if he does have information on anything, he does not share it. All he will say to people is, just buy my book. Ah, see, there is where I have the advantage, for I have a pre-order voucher, and all about his pre-order voucher. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, exit, you know, as excited as I am for this book, I... Uh... I fear it is not going to be published anytime soon if my recent dealings with Jamuel are to be believed. <laughs> um, uh, mm. I believe that uh, you say he's not nice to people, but my interactions with him have not given me uh, the thought. He has been pretty thankful and cooperative uh, so far, and I do not believe the buying of his book is necessarily his go-to prerequisite any longer. Are you sure we are talking about the same halfling? Not in the slightest. 
<laughs> but eh, I am still figuring it out. All the signs point to this being Jemuel, but uh, given the circumstances that uh, I will choose to withhold for as long as you withhold the eye, uh, <laughs> his feelings and thoughts may have been changed uh, quite drastically. Uh, you know the concept of a midlife crisis? This is sort of like a, a very late life crisis. You can tell that she absolutely has follow-up questions, but um, uh, instead of asking any of them, she just stands up and says, I am late. Oh. Is there a visitor to the eye before me? There is no visitor, but I do want to see. The planes will not wait for me, Professor. They're always moving, ah. and we're always observing. I see. Well, whenever I uh, get a response from him, I will be sure to forward it along. Hopefully it is something you deem uh, adequate. I am not holding my breath. Because I do not recommend it. It is usually bad for the oxygen flow. The brain functions much less if you hold your breath. Have a good day, Professor. Uh, you as well. And he's smiling and sipping his coffee. I hope to hear from you soon. Stars in a rise just gives a brief nod uh, before setting off. He will uh, scoop his little pointy pyramid back into his uh, into his pouch, or I guess into the little carrying case that it's in, okay. and uh, stand up and walk out. And he's kind of have the thoughts under his his breath. I was like, oh boy! <laughs> All right, and for the for the purposes of tying everything back together, basically, as uh, um, as Pontifex leaves the tavern, that will be the moment when the group is back from their visit to the priest uh, um, and that's when you all meet up and discuss your uh, what they've been up to alright this is the DM man just to clarify there was something you said about a possible sort of rumored quest thing that he would have gotten and that didn't happen right? he did not okay uh... way to go no I'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> I can only roll that okay. Very, yeah, no, that was very interesting. <laughs> I rolled a perfect average. <laughs> Man, so the only was a thing very I interesting am, conversation. Yeah, the only thing I'm retconning is that indeed, I, 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 as the group was trying to decide where to go, I said that it was a chance that perhaps somebody might have been, uh, someone slash something might have been mentioned during this conversation uh, that might have pointed the Pontifex towards a, a colony further to the west. Um... But yeah, that's currently not the case. So, small rat down well, there. Well, we've got reasons to go west, anyways. So, yep. yeah, one of the one of the goals that I guess Pontifex said earlier is that he wants to get to the Elian Arden colony so he can send uh, word, uh, so he can basically tell his his mentor, uh, the High Scrivener, about Jamuel's bookiness, because um, <laughs> that is, like, if anyone that... it could possibly be the authority on book-related magic stuff. It would be that guy. Wait, is that the same letter that you wanted Talix to send for you? Uh, he gave you a letter to send back to Nazradora. Ah, oh, right. Because there's okay. another person in Nazradora um, that he's sending to. Uh, when th that is him uh, trying to get a letter sent to Petra. Mm -hmm. All right, that letter was sent. Man, he knows so many people. <laughs> yeah, my list of known people is actually relatively short. It's just that, like, it just so happens to be very, very good picks, I suppose. <laughs> Whenever, like, the man trapped in a book of sorts, okay. I happen That's to have true. a person who's, like, in... See, is that exactly... Uh, <laughs> before knowing this plot hook at all, so... <laughs> not so, also it just worked out very well. One small thing uh, is that, yes, Talix has, has already... Um, dealt with sending the letter in question uh normally sending letters to plurina uh is very expensive 
Um, I don't think Pontifex actually has the funds to cover that for now. I have four gold. Four gold, yeah. Mm. And Petra is a professor. Hmm. I'll yeah, he's kind of attacking this Jamil thing from two fronts. So yeah. the Scrivener, um, he's going from that end, and then Petra, from what you know about her, he's going the the less magical end, I suppose. Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll deal with that letter later and figure out exactly how we go about sure. it. Uh, for the time no being, rush. we're going to go back to the almost present, uh, because before the present present, uh, I did want to see if a Pontifex would have had any interest in the... Uh, remaining items the Glimmer had for sale. A Christmas ornament and some pretty clothes. Uh, pretty much. So, one is a set of robes that are, um, they're sequined. Uh, so they're very, very sparkly. They're pink and blue and red and yellow. Uh, very, very eye-catching. Uh, and they would fit on anyone in the group except for Brooke and for Pip. So. Okay. Um, are these like kind of like gender neutral? Uh, yes. Okay. And uh, is that does this look like formal dress or does this look like like mm. what 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 seems to be the the design intent? Is uh, this like a, a walking the red carpet kind of thing or is this like has some kind of significance outside of just looking more like glamorous? A Dancing, bard, entertaining a town kind of feel. I see. Okay, yeah. Uh, how much is that? So Glimmer only accepts payment with the uh, objects. So uh, and so far she has shown ah. interest to anything that is uh, uh, sparkly or uh, very very colorful. I see. And then what was the other one? The, the ornaments or something? The other one, I have described it as a sphere made of differently colored layers of metal with a hook at the top. Uh, from top to bottom, the colors are layered as white, green, white, red, white, green, and then white again. And on one side, there is an empty impression that's shaped like the bottom half of a small diamond. The bottom half of a diamond. It's like a triangle? Like an inverted triangle? Uh, sort of, but with like more facets. I see. Um, can I make some kind of check to see like what it's made out of? Uh, yeah. Uh, like an investigation or something? Yes, that would be investigation. Cool. I know I have something special with investigation. Uh, yeah, I added D4. Like that. Yeah, like that. But it is a uh, unindent, so like the the yes. center tip is at the very the further in. Um, ye okay, so it's obviously made of uh, uh, a series of metals, uh, but uh, um, as far as you can tell, uh, at least looking at it now, the metals are uh, not from Plurna. Oh. And then uh, I guess I'll do my um, I'll do my class feature to instantly cast a ritual spell, um, and I'll cast the tech magic. Are either of these things magical? Okay, um, the sphere isn't, and the robes are. Uh, okay, he will keep that knowledge to himself, and uh, he's probably going to pull his alms box. Uh, it's like a, I think his is like a like a little perfect cube, like kind of bound chest. Uh, and he'll pop open the alms box and he's going to pull his uh, his sensor, uh, the one that he used for the uh, the bury the funeral ceremony for Jamuel. Um, just going off of the way that Pontifex is adorned with lots of silver and brass. I feel like that probably carries over to the sensor. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just like a, a plate dangling from chains, essentially, that has like a like a, a little door on it that you would put incense into. Um, and he'll pull out the sensor and he'll pull out a, 
a block of incense that goes with it and try to gauge the curiosity. This is a sort of religious piece used in certain ceremonies, and I've gotten recent use out of it, and I believe it's kind of a bad taste in my mouth, but it is a sort of collector's item, you could say. Okay. Um... Maybe I'll even, like, use a light cantrip to, like, move the light around it to show the, how shiny <laughs> it is. Yeah, you're currently sort of uh, in the middle of this clearing uh, in the swamp. Uh, and there's sunlight shining down, and the others have, like, always made sure to put their items, like, up. Pull them up so that they catch the sunlight uh, well. Um, and you having also seen them do this and making... Uh, putting in the extra effort even with the cantrip, you can tell that this uh, uh, giant uh, magpie um, I, I, she, she, she immediately reaches over with her beak and grabs the uh, sensor by the, by the chains at the top and uh, um, sure. yanks it off of your hand but uh, uh, does not take the, the block of incense instead and as the, uh, as the sensor is dangling from her beak uh, um, She's going to say, and uh, she she doesn't speak normally, so it's just the pip and the uh, talics that I've been interpreting for her this entire time. So you just hear her chirping, uh, but the others can translate for you. And uh, uh, she's saying, trade, trade, trade. If this so sparks your interest, I would uh, be willing to part with it for this sequin dress. I recently met someone who I believe is in deserving of a gift. Trade! Glimmer um, moves over to put the, the sensor into her backpack uh, and uh, she holds up the beak... Um, uh, what? She holds up with her beak uh, the clothes hanger that uh, the robes are dangling from and uh, uh, pushes it into your arms. Oh. Well, that was very amicable. Okay. And he'll... he'll fold it carefully not to not to bend or damage any of the sequins all right awesome Woo, I'm you're glad already that we did buying that. her a pretty outfit and everything <laughs> <laughs> hey i'm not getting what? any younger that means we can uh return to the present and uh we can we can move on from here uh now having uh tied up all the loose ends in the past and there's um, going to be no more quick. yes uh, with the with the detect magic, um, I'm gonna try to I guess figure out to the best of my ability what this thing what the dress can do. Um, would you at least be able to tell me the school of magic that's on it from detect magic? Um, yes, I don't absolutely. have uh, identify. But... Oh wait, no, I do have identify, but I, we don't have a pearl. So I'll just I'll go off the school. Mhm. Mm school of magic on the robes is. Uh... Is that correct? Hold on. Sorry, I'm second guessing myself. It's transmutation. <clears throat> I guess you would also learn the other two schools for the other items. Yeah. Um, we actually yeah. already had, uh, like, in the minutes leading up to the brutes attacking, uh, this brook was using attack to magic, and so we went over the uh, magic of the other items that if well, the schools of magic of the other items. Um, so Vial was Evocation, and the Snow Globe was Transmutation as well? That is correct. Wait, so I remember the Cursed Snow Globe that has Transmutation, and what's this other it, thing? A vi oh, the Vial of the, the Gold cursed. Glitter? <laughs> yeah, yes. with, actually it's Gold Liquid, not Glitter. Oh, okay. It has like so, specks gold of Gold liquid. inside. Oh, oh that's it was not, not Yeah, it was not okay. solid gold. It was. I see. It was not solid gold. No. I loved. Transmutation <laughs> on the globe uh, and on the snow globe and evocation uh, on the vial. And the okay. castle is just pretty. And the miniature castle is just pretty. Okay. I'll uh, I'll add a custom transmutation robe thing, I guess. You have survived the root encounter. Um, anything you guys would like <laughs> oh. to do before uh, setting off? 
Um, I think that the very first thing that Pip would do after waking up is reach down and grab the snow globe and and check in on that that woman in the in the ball in the house. Okay. Uh, since you guys overslept a little bit to compensate for what happened last night, um, by the time you check the globe, uh, the miniature woman in the snow globe is uh, uh, already up and uh, um, cleaning her house and uh, seems to just be uh, doing morning things. Hello? Can you hear me? She does not react to you speaking. Uh, and then I think I think Pip would run to the professor and say, Professor, have you seen the snow globe? Hmm? Professor? Professor? Uh, Matt? Hello? Sorry, did I... am I cutting Can out? Can anyone hear me? Yeah, oh. I can hear you. Oh uh, yeah, we we weren't hearing you, Matt. <laughs> yeah, I can. Hear, yeah, we can hear you, Austin. We weren't hearing Matt. Oh, and you almost felt so alone. <laughs> All right, wait. Here's, can you hear me now? Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, there we go. Right now, I was I talking, and I saw my the voice connected thing had one bar and was red, and it was dead silent, and so I thought uh. I lost Discord, but then I could hear you guys talking. Oh, that's okay. weird. Okay, uh, I, I just make sure I didn't miss anything. You said Pip is called some old lady on a snow globe or something, and then he's bringing it to the professor? Yeah, he, <laughs> he, he walked okay. up to the professor and said, Have you seen the snow globe? Uh, I believe I was there when you bought it. My memory is a little hazy, but I have not looked into it. Why? Ha well, have you seen the person in it? There's a lady. Yeah, I also just looked at the lady. Just to catch you up, none of us know about this yet. Pip hasn't shown anyone. Oh. Okay, so he yeah, only the, the professor. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Winter, do do I recognize this person? Or I guess what can I tell about them? Um, so to describe to you the snow globe, inside of it there is a depiction of a house on a hillside. Um, and indeed there is a tiny, tiny, tiny woman inside that is... Uh, um, just doing normal things, going around her house, currently cleaning, just sweeping the floor. Um, and as you bring the globe up to your eyes, and this woman is so tiny that you have to like really bring it close to your face to even be able to kind of see her and sort of make up, uh, make out some of her features. Um, so with your eye pretty much against the glass, she uh, does raise her head and wave through the window. And then she goes back to cleaning. Like she waves at me? Mm-hmm. Oh. Uh, is this a, is this a human? She looks humanoid, but it's just really hard to make up any more, uh, make out any more details just because of how small she is. Unless you have a, um, okay. some way, like if you have a, um, a magnifying lens. You know, is that does seem blue. like something he would have, huh? Uh. Do you see her? I do. I do see her. Um, she also seems to have seen me. Yeah, but the problem is, I she can't hear me when I talk to her. I was wondering if if maybe you could use your brain magic. Oh, uh, yes, of course. Uh, I can try a, f a couple of things, actually. Uh, yes, uh, let's let's just go for it. Whatever. Uh, and yeah, I'll use my telepathy, uh, and I will try to direct it at her, uh, with five different languages. <laughs> I guess. Inanic, Plernan, Draconic, Primordial, and Sylvan. Okay. Um, you use the telepathy to try to reach her, and you go through all the languages that you know, but uh, at no point does she seem to give any indication that she heard you. That one didn't work. Uh, I have a couple of ideas. Uh, do you mind if I hold it for a moment? Uh, okay. But be careful. 
Yes, of course, it is, uh, looks kind of fragile. Uh, he'll take it in one of his hands, and in his other hand, he's going to cast a light cantrip in his hand, and he's just going to straight up palm it like a basketball and flood oh. it with light. Oh, <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, right, well... Just flashbang this woman. <laughs> yeah! Uh... You, okay, there comes to for 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 a moment you can't really see what's going on in the globe because all you see is just this, the water that's inside uh, getting completely filled with light, uh, and it's all just just bright and white. Ah, uh, are you going to end the effect? <laughs> Yeah, he's basically gonna like, like, he's putting the light on his hand and then he's gonna like palm the snow globe to just like illuminate the whole thing and then pull his hand away and see if he got her attention. Uh, she is covering her eyes. She has her. Why'd you um, do that? Her <laughs> she has her eyes basically like in the inside of her elbow and then very uh -huh. slowly pulls her arm back down. Uh, as she's covering her eyes, now that he has confirmed that magic can reach, um, he's gonna cast Attack Thoughts. Figure if light can reach, this can probably reach, so that's what he's gonna go for. Mm, hold on, I'm reading this spell. Sure. I was doing somewhat like a range check, I guess. Okay. With uh, the light. Yep. Yeah. Your spell... Your spell reveals that uh, this woman is currently very confused and a little afraid. Uh, I'm going to pry further. <laughs> uh, wisdom saving throw? Uh, it is a, yeah, wisdom saving throw. I chose the right person for this challenge. <laughs> it's a DC 14. Yeah. Okay. The spell ends. <laughs> oh, no. Hmm. Uh, the woman closes the blinds of the windows. <laughs> and then goes from window well? to window and does that with all of them. <laughs> well, uh, Black Mirror. Pip, I, uh, I have established a few things. Um, <laughs> one, uh, she is aware of us. Uh, two, magic can reach into this. And uh, three, uh, she is a little angry. <laughs> oh no. She was, uh, I detected a hint of confusion, and when I tried to dig a little deeper, um, it seems this is a person with a little more mental fortitude than I've encountered before, and uh, she did not take it very well. Um, oh no. If I... you want to know more, I can always press further at a later date. If you ever <laughs> discover that she is outside again, I can try to bend her mind to my will, if you oh, wish. No. But, uh... <laughs> no, I don't I don't want to upset her. I. I'm sorry, I just figured you'd be the best person for this. I mean... Well, it's a little late, she's already upset. I gleaned that much. <laughs> uh, I didn't even need magic. I, I mean, I, I would go to the others, but I didn't want to go to Brooke because he hates small people. <laughs> that is a, is a known fact. His disdain for the minuscule is well known. Well, thanks anyway. Well, you know, if you ever want to try again, I am always willing, but... I have a few other ideas, but as she is currently out of, I guess, eyeshot, it is a little more difficult. I had the idea to perhaps flood her living quarters with water. I could do that as well. <laughs> it already is! <laughs> no, but, oh, well then, perhaps removing of the water. No. Yeah, see if you can dry her out like you did the, the plants. It, it seems to work with the plants, and, you know, if anything would get her just... attention. <laughs> keeps it holds it away from from the professor and <laughs> you know, perhaps she knows something. Bit of I could always try to oh. control her mind and give her the the need to escape and see if she is capable of doing so herself. There are okay, many ways that we could experiment. Here. Okay. You have a great day. Thank you for coming to me <laughs> with such a sensitive subject. 
<laughs> Western, can I roll if I heard that conversation? I, <laughs> Especially I think what everybody did. Right? Oh, okay. Like you're rolling around a just, campfire? You hear pot effects, right? Oh, wait, no, he's talking through Squeak, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Pip, Pip will... Well, Pontifex, no wait, Pontifex is already up. I don't know how that works. Whatever. Uh, Austin, yeah, pretty would much you... you can assume from from here on out that if if you hear Pip's voice, it's coming from Squeak. Okay, it was not a telepathic conversation. No, Pip okay. can't do that easily. Right. <laughs> then all of you have heard this, yes. All right. We'll keep that in mind for later. <laughs> uh, looking at your solo there. Yeah. Please Find don't hurt her. <laughs> what? Pot well, effects anyway. made her mad. I have that effect on women I come to find. <laughs> <laughs> what are you referring to, Professor? I just I have a tendency of... Uh... Upsetting the fair sex. He flashed her. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you did what? <laughs> Rook oh. looks at Pontifex. Talix, oh. if you heard that, that sounds absurd. You haven't even seen any part of Pontifex except for his face. <laughs> oh, I'm a Huh. Uh, Anything <laughs> in the pursuit of experimentation. <laughs> <laughs> Me and the woman in his snow globe experimented a bit. I flashed her appropriately and she seemed uh, upset. <laughs> I uh, am done with this line of conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question for you all. You uh, what is it? All traded with the bird yesterday. What is it you were hoping to gain from it? Oh, more than anything, I just thought it was really interesting and... I don't know, I've never been able to trade with a bird before. Oh, unless you can't boo him. <laughs> but a bird bird. I saw a item that was... Uh visually appealing and had the air of magicalness to it and uh, I have someone who may be in need of a gift, so. And I no longer had use oh. for that sensor. Wait, do you mean the, the friend of yours that you made mad? Yes, the other woman that I upset. <laughs> <laughs> Did you also flash her? Well, to be more clear, she seemed upset before the meeting, but I don't know if I helped to mend it or otherwise. Which brings me actually to a question. Um, who has a uh, gemule? Uh, we, we gave him back to you. I was going to ask you about him. Uh, sorry, did, oh, I, did yeah, I interrupt sure. Taka? Feel well, free to just cut off. I, I'm not sure if other, yeah, others might needed, have needed to answer the question. Or... If no one had an answer prepared, then we could continue this line of inquiry. I don't mind. Uh, well, Pip was just going to say, Well, I had a really heavy hunting trap that I found, and I didn't want to use it, but she seemed to like it. And the snow globe is really cool. Alleviating burden. I see. Good choice. I mean... Oh, good. You can answer him first. Oh, I already gave an answer. Do you have something to say? Well, I wasn't sure if I was going to trade. I would have bought something for her, but she didn't want money. So after you offered, so this might look pretty nice. So thank you for that again. Even though I'm not quite sure what is in that. Does anything happen if I shake it? If you shake what? 
the vial? Um, take a listen. The specks of gold don't really like. They don't gather at the bottom when it's still, so they're they're always just just scattered in the liquid. We're just like reshuffling them around. We should find out what this gold is, so... Why did you ask that? Effect? I... could not see value... in what that bird was holding. That's so true. I wonder what, gave... what you saw. What we gave up wasn't of much value either, but... I think it's, uh... It's a mutual exchange of new things that we can kind of find interesting, you know? Not... So, not so do you thing. intend to exchange further? Certainly. I mean... If we come across the Yvelsi, for sure, uh, trading with them, you can find all sorts of curiosities, or anyone we meet. We exchange ideas. We... We swap things, stories, whatever, and we broaden our understanding of the world, right? Like, look at this, this castle I got. It's just a new thing. I wonder who made it. Maybe it's... Maybe there are Ladarians who make beautiful works of craftsmanship like this, or maybe it came from Plurna, but it's something new that we can try to learn about. So, your castle holds a story that you wish to tell? Everything holds a story, but I wish to learn it first. <laughs> I see. Thank you all for answering. Well, some people... Some people like things more than other people like them. Like, the Yvelsi, I gave them... I gave them a religious book that I didn't care one squat about, and they gave me something really cool. And, and, and it's like, some people, some people care about, uh, rocks. The cool people do. <laughs> <laughs> like, your lady. Hmm. I see. So I should have something to trade as well. Well, look, look for something that catches your eye along the way. I mean, you like collecting plants, don't you? Hmm. True. I know for sure there are plenty of people who find those interesting. We've already met one. Pontifex, were you asking about the book? Uh, yes, I uh, seem to slip my mind. I had a message um, for Jemuel in hopes of a response. Oh, yes, I, I wanted to check in with him this morning, anyways. We haven't talked to him since that, uh, that terrifying happening last night. There you go, he will uh, open the book. Hello, Jamil. Uh, how have you been? It has been a little while. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, I had a question for you. Uh, your memories are slowly returning, it seems. Uh, you're starting to uh, remember people from your past life, we could say. You remember the Sasuke Eren or whatever. <laughs> fairly vividly um do you recall a tabaxi woman uh, by the name of stars in her eyes um the ink that is collecting itself on the pages of the blank book uh, uh forming into words uh, uh there's a like very 
brief moment of hesitation. Uh, and then he starts writing again. Uh, yes. I believe you were my person at the time. She seems to know you uh, fairly well. She seems so. If you don't remember any details, do you... Uh... Yes, it's... I felt the same. Um... Yes, I don't think many people like her, if we're being honest. <laughs> she seemed a little uh, abrasive, you could say. But uh, it seems that the two of you had some sort of arrangement before. Um, she spoke to me of uh, a hypothesis, a theory, that uh, the earthquakes of Ladaria uh, are somehow being influenced or caused by someone who is uh, either by the Jade Council itself or someone adjacent uh, in order to uh, prove their point of the necessity of a vakanath like being to hold the plates together. Uh, whoa, 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 hold on, what? Yes, it is simply a hypothesis. She, is, as I am, is a believer in hard proof and nothing else. Uh, but the earthquakes of Ladaria apparently only date back to 30 years ago, which is which is when oh, we started yeah, influencing. That's crazy. Oh, no, I believe. I'm sure I could come up with a myriad of them given the time and the interest, but seeing as how I have neither of them, uh, she seemed to be a little more concerned with it. Uh, and she said that you and her were in some form of communication. Uh, and she simply had a question for you, and it was, uh, and he'll like pull up his brass thing, the little orb, and like press a quote-unquote button, and it'll project his little note. Uh, ask Jemuel, have you found a solution yet? And let him know it was I who was asking. Uh, sincerely, stars in her eyes. Do you know of a solution? I know not of ex the exact problem she is wanting an answer to, but it seems something she would only content herself with an answer from you. And I believe that if she gets what she wants, I may... Yes, a solution. A solution to the earthquakes. A solution to the earthquakes, a solution to... Uh, whatever a person or being or occurrence that could be causing them. I'm inclined to believe Jamil's uh, impression of her. Not that I've met her. <laughs> it's probably for the best. Hmm. Well, then perhaps this. You may not know of a solution or of a problem, but... Is there anything coming to your mind that I could use to convince her that I am in contact with you? Seems that in your past dealings with her, uh, that you are quite aloof and short to give clear answers, so perhaps we can leverage that. Anything you can say to, I guess, sway her into owing me a favor. I have been promised a tour of the Obsidian Eye, and I believe... I may be able to glean something from it. Are you sure it's wise to make it so known publicly how we're traveling with Chamuel? Oh no, I was very um, subtle about it. She knows not of the details, merely that I am in contact with him. Well, still, that makes us pretty unique, doesn't it? It does. Hmm. <clears throat> oh, well, Jamil, you, you had a gut reaction to hearing of her name. You just don't know of her, but you have a bad feeling. How 
Is there anything that comes to mind when I mention um, the Jade Council causing earthquakes? As you, you, uh, he reaches the end of the page and you flip it over and he, says, page, yeah. he, he writes. <laughs> yes, it seems that you two had a bit of a tumultuous relationship before. <laughs> but do you have a feeling? You know that is to be expected. Hmm. hmm. Teacher, whatever you think of the Jake Council, surely you don't believe that. I mean... It is not a matter of belief, it's that I have no proof one way or the other. It is a hypothesis, and it is not a hypothesis that is entirely well, there are some things we can possible. know. There are some things we can know just by knowing people. Do I you know. know members of the Jake Council personally? I do. Well, and you trust them that they would not do anything to further their own agenda? Oh, what agenda? Staying the agenda power? of perpetuating the faith, of staying in power as the Jade Council. I don't like these implications. Yes, no one is a fan of these implications. That's why it is an implication. It is okay to ponder. I'm not confirming one way or the other, but uh, the allegations are not impossible. While improbable they may be, the impossibility has not been ruled out. <laughs> You're not talking to no one. <laughs> yep. Um, just keep in mind, Telex, that people who are in power usually like to stay in power. Uh, so what, are you shutting that? <laughs> <laughs> He's what? leaving. Oh, he already left? Oh. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Um, well, then I'll rather turn to Pontifex. <laughs> <laughs> just and one, say, just one small thing. Oh. Uh, Austin needs to go. Oh. Um, oh. So like, let's wrap up on that cliffhanger. Let's wrap it up, if possible. Okay. Well, you understand Pontifex is a little, or uh, Telex is a little uh, touchy of this subject. I mean, he seems to be a strong believer. And I appreciate your curiosity and not taking everything for granted and asking questions I don't want to ask. But please be careful of who you mention Jamil to, and especially that we're traveling with him, because a lot of powerful people are interested in him. And this is our little secret. And oh, do not worry. I said nothing of this sort. Merely that I have ways of communicating with him. Okay. And uh, this did not seem a matter that she wanted to become public record. I do not believe that she will share this information with anyone. <laughs> I mean, not with the information you have about her, right? You would be surprised what you can learn of a person over a cup of alcoholic coffee. Alcohol does these things. It's true. <laughs> hmm. Anyways, what is, uh, do we have a destination per se? Um, uh, the next closest town? Vera. 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 Yep. Uh, maybe just Matt's getting. Is there like, like a reason? Like, what's our, what's our current? You're generally heading for uh, uh, multiple settlements that are more west compared to you. Uh, Elinarden being one of them. Ah, uh, um, uh, okay. Brooke has business in uh, Erka. Um, Pekka wants to check out the tree, which is uh, west of Simlielon. Yeah, and... Uh... Talix and wants to go to Aria as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, Winter, if anything, with my uh, a... yeah. Uh, sorry, with my with my room, do I have like, 
do I know where I heard the rumor from? Like, what town? You would have picked up that rumor in Simlielon. Okay, okay. Got it. Okay. Uh, yeah, we're gonna wrap up the session here and resume uh, with your with your journey on uh, uh, <laughs> uh, the next time we're able to to all get together. All right. Woo! Yay! Yeah. Well, thanks for having a second session. Yeah. It's Glad great to, to have, have you, you back. back. Yeah, I should. Uh, I should definitely be there for next week. Cause this should be this should be all done and over with soon. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, we'll we'll have to figure out what day works. But uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, now from from session to session, we'll always have to actually like figure out a schedule. I'm glad we could all work. gather for this fun and impromptu <laughs> session. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thanks for preparing it so quickly. <laughs> I, yeah. Everything I have prepared for today has not happened. Like, I had the rest of the journey to Vera prepare. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and that's Vera good. Itself, <laughs> yeah, I'm good. I'm good for next time. <laughs> you got the talkative old man back to burn hours. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> oh, we, we managed to do that without you, even. It's just <laughs> a to... very, uh, very RP heavy group. Yep. Back to slow down the progression. <laughs> Well, by flirting with cats thank you <laughs> <laughs> thank you all for being here um, and let's try to get back together for the next session soon yeah I was like, bye to everyone who's cool. been following us on twitch or uh, is going to, to watch the VOD later uh, I hope you had fun and I'll see you again soon bye 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 everyone bye, bye. bye.